What are the three big questions I have about this team as they prepare for the preseason to get wrapped up and the regular season to begin? That plus a whole lot more comes up on Thursday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast for August 22nd, 2024. You are Locked On Raiders, your daily Las Vegas Raiders podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome in Raider Nation to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast to get the latest edition of the show as soon as it becomes available. And as of course, as always, if you're checking us out on YouTube, you know we appreciate that. The show has grown so fast, so quick, and that's because of you, Raider Nation, and because of my man Ari. As a matter of fact, over 15,000 subscriptions, like 15.4 thousand currently, and that's because of you, Raider Nation. We definitely appreciate you. We shout you out. There's so many different outlets. There's There's so many different options you have to get all your Raider information that you need, but you choose us, whether it's one day a week, two days a week, or all five days a week. We definitely appreciate that. And obviously, my man Ari does a great job behind the scenes making it all happen. If it wasn't for him, we would have no Locked On Raider Podcast YouTube page. So shout him out. He's on Twitter at Ari Produces. I'm on Twitter as well, at your boy Q254. And we got the Locked On Raider Podcast voicemail line at 707 654 Four six nine three got so much feedback as you can imagine. Calls and texts coming up in segment number three. As many as we can get in as possible. Won't be able to get all of them in. I know this, but we'll try to get in as much as possible. So that's segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Segment number two, we'll talk about the three big questions I have about this Raiders team. Some may be able to get answered as early as Friday in their game against the 49ers, preseason game number three. Some might take till the regular season. Right, Some I might not ever get the answer to, but those are the three big questions I have. We'll break it down coming up in segment number two. Here in segment number one, just news and notes of the day, including hearing from head coach Antonio Pearson. We'll do that after I tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use promo code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. I'll tell you more about them later on in the show. But off top, the Raiders made a roster move official on Wednesday. I talked about it on Wednesday's show. Uh, It was a transaction that actually took place on Tuesday, but it was not official. It is now. Linebacker Deshaun White has signed with the Silver and Black. He played in the UFL's Michigan Panthers earlier in the year. Uh, Entered the NFL as a free agent with the Buffalo Bills back in 2023. Uh, He's from North Richland Hills, Texas. Played five years at OU. Was a four-year starter for the Sooners. Played in 63 three career games, 49 starts, totaling 259 tackles, 126 solo, 19 and a half tackles, five and a half sacks, two picks and two fumble recoveries, earned an all Big 12 honorable mention back in 2022. He's actually number 47 if you're keeping track. And in a corresponding move, the Raiders waived injured wide receiver Jeff Foreman, who will revert to the reserve injured list should he clear waivers. And for Jeff Foreman, it's unfortunate. Uh, He's the guy that hurt himself in training camp. He was a wide receiver that uh, went down. He went down tough, and immediately they put the air cast on his leg and, you know, carted him off the field, and then he got in the ambulance and, you know, went to the hospital there in Costa Mesa. So you knew he wasn't going to be returning. Uh, They classified it as a knee injury, but uh, every one of us that was on the sideline that saw it saw how severe it was. So hopefully Jeff Foreman does uh, heal up sooner rather than later, right? He's able to get back to resuming his career whenever that case may be, but there's definitely nobody going to pick him off up off of waivers. He's not playing in 2020. 24. That's for a fact. So he'll revert back to the reserve injured list once uh, once he does clear waivers. Now, want to get into some sound bites from Antonio Pierce. He met with the media before their practice at the Intermountain Health Performance Center. Uh, they were having first responders night. There was a lot of alumni in the building and, you know, just uh, probably a really good feeling. Their last, uh, you know, practice before preseason game number three, and then they've got a handful of practices next week leading up until, well, the roster cut downs and, of course, the first game of the season against the, the Chargers coming up on September 8th. But now we know Gardner Minshew is a starting quarterback. He announced that on Sunday. How important is it for him to get on the same page with Devontae Adams and the rest of the offense. Yeah, very important. And not just with Devontae, with our entire offense. Colton Miller as well. Left tackle came back. Um, so it's important that we just the chemistry and continuity, you know, the, the split in the reps, is, that's over with now. You know, it's Gardner's, it's Gardner's show, and, and he needs to be a leader and understand what, you know, what we're lacking right now. And what we're lacking is not playing together throughout the camp, like most teams, you know, that have a starter from day one. So there's a lot of work to go there. He's taking some great steps forward. They're doing it in the film room, and we'll get another uh, chance at it tonight. There was uh, AP talking about Gardner Minshew, what he's got to do. 
right? I mean, Devontae Adams, obviously getting on the same page with him is super important, but he's got to get on the same page with everyone from Jacoby Myers to Brock Bowers to Michael Mayer, uh, Trey Tucker with the deep ball. Uh, obviously, the running backs are, are weapons as well. Luke Getze, he's got to get on the same page with everybody now that he's the bona fide starter, right? Now it's all about him and that first team offense. So, uh, you know, there will be no splitting reps. It's all about Gardner Minshew with the ones, Aiden O'Connell with the twos. Uh, we got the good news on Tuesday about Colton Miller returning, being activated from the pup list, something I was concerned about, wanting to make sure that he came back before the 27th. Obviously, he did. So here's Antonio Pierce on how he feels to get Colton Miller back in the mix. Man, is that veteran presence. I think it's no different than what you heard Trey Tucker, Jacoby, all these other guys talk about when Devontae came back. When you got a, a left tackle with a presence, the ability like Colton Miller, it just – I ain't going to lie, I felt, I felt at ease yesterday watching Big 74 go out there. Um, but he's done a really good job even on PUP – being around, being vocal. He took Jackson Powers on his side, was really doing some things on the side with him, just getting his psyche, understanding, look, man, you're a rookie. You know, everything doesn't work out the first year for you and just bringing him along. But obviously, we're talking about one of the better left tackles in football and one of our better offensive players on, on our team. <laughs> AP right there, you know, he, he was happy. He had a sigh of relief when he saw 74 out there. And I'm telling you, that's how uh, everybody felt. And again, going back to Costa Mesa, right, when, when they started, and I say they, I mean, JPJ and Colton Miller, they started on the pup list. Tom Telesco was like, yeah, it's not, you know, they're not going to be on there long. And the more that went by and went by and more time that went by, I was like, man, hold up now. And then when JPJ returned before Colton Miller, that's when I really started to get concerned. But no worries. Colton Miller's back. And matter of fact, he spoke with the media following practice real quick. Here's Colton Miller after practice on uh, Wednesday. We were running. Uh, the combinations are, are, are really strong. Uh, Prediction-wise, it's not, not too crazy. Um, so it's not uh, too different to pick up. Um, it's adjustable. Uh, I'm, re I'm really like. Really I know you've been mentoring a little bit with Jackson, Co Jackson Cars Johnson. Just uh, talk about that relationship and bringing him along as a rookie. Yeah, Jackson. You know, uh, he's uh, he's been working off the side with me. You know, he's he's on it, man. He's he's, he's getting as much work as he can out of the day. Um, he's he's on the right track mentally. He's he's with a smart kid. Um, so it's just. For him, he's just got to get the reps. You know, he's a rookie, so he's got to he's got to go through that. Um, but he's making strides each day. New quarterback, Colton. What are your initial thoughts on protecting a guy that's a lot more mobile and doesn't fear turning his head? Minshew, love him, man. He's he's a he's a predator. Um, and the time that we played him, man, he, he he comes to play. You know, so uh, I'm excited. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, part of doing these reps. You know, where is he setting now? Time and time is great. You know, every everything's looking good, so I'm I'm really excited. Is the cadence much different? Like, do you have to adjust to new quarterback's cadence and when you try to hear him? Uh, the new cadence overall is, is different from last year. It's it's, it's a little <laughs> it's a little something different. Um, it, it gets I mean, it's getting these guys all the time. So <laughs> it makes it makes my job easier. So. That was a video that uh, Vic Tafer had taken. He was there with Adam Hill and a couple others, uh, the media members talking to Colton Miller. And, you know, just to see him smiling, see him out there uh, participating. He was there at Allegiant Stadium for the open practice on Tuesday night participating. Just glad to know he's back. And obviously he's working really closely with JPJ, as you can hear in that sound right there. Uh, a couple more sound bites from Antonio Pierce, who met with the media on Wednesday before practice. Uh, this is about JPJ. Will he play on Friday, right? I mean, we haven't seen him in any kind of preseason action. So where is JPJ at right now? Will he play on Friday? And a couple follow-ups as well. No, we'll hold him out to the first game. AP, as a point of clarification on JPJ, did you say you're holding him out? He'll play in the first game? Well, I'm hoping it is. yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, we got to ramp him back up. I mean, he hasn't even... I don't even think we've got a week worth of practice out of him. So, you know, we got tonight, he'll be full go tonight. We got some more practices uh, next week, and then we got the Chargers week. Will he have enough time, or has he had enough time to show, you know, what he has in terms of making a case to be a starter? No. No, we haven't seen enough. So, no, he won't play on Friday. He said he was going to save him for the, you know, the season opener, which got me excited while I was listening. I wasn't there uh, in attendance, but I was listening while it was happening. I was like, oh, man, tweeted out, you know, JPJ is going to come back in the season opener. And then you hear the follow-ups. Well, you know, the hoping that he's going to be able to come back for the season opener, and then he has not seen enough, and he's not going to be able to do enough in between now and the season opener to be a starter. So, uh, look for Cody White here to be that starting left guard, but JPJ could be in the mix sooner rather than later. Again, just got a couple more sound bites from Antonio Pierce, who met with the media before practice 
on Wednesday. Uh, this one's about the tough decisions in the wide receiver room. Once they get down to the 53-man roster, uh, you know that the back-end guys, it's going to be a pretty hard competition to decide You know who's going to be on the roster, who's not, who's going to be on the practice squad. The wide receiver room looks like it's going to be tough. Devontae, no-brainer. Jacoby Myers, no-brainer. Trey Tucker. And by the sounds of what you're about to hear, DJ Turner, a no-brainer as well, which I kind of already anticipated. But here's AP talking about the tough decisions he anticipates in the wide receiver room. Yeah, Christian Wilkerson's done a good job down the gate, um, down, the, down the road. Guidance pop Popped up, Terrell Bynum, you know, obviously, you know, DJ Turner's, he's good. We're good with him. But there's there's some other guys that's really, you know, just stepped up, even in practice. And it's kind of – sometimes you get in a game, it doesn't work out that way where the, the gentleman or the receiver catches the ball and everybody just, oh, you know, he didn't do nothing. But there's a lot of opportunities that you see in film. We've gotten a 1,000 team reps in situational football to evaluate these players. And obviously we're very talented in that room with Devontae and Jacoby and Trey Tucker that, you know – that fifth, sixth spot, and those guys on practice squad is going to be very vital for us. I like what he said about DJ Turner. He's cool. <laughs> he's cool, right? Yeah, he ain't going nowhere, right? Not only are they using him uh, as in special teams, which is what he's always done, but also he's been become a weapon offensively. I'm excited to see what Trey Tucker and DJ Turner can do and what Luke Getzey could do, how he could set them up for success moving forward. Finally, from Antonio Pierce, he wanted to thank the Raider alumni. This is alumni weekend. There's going to be a ton of alumni at Allegiant Stadium on Friday night against the 49ers. That'll probably be the most exciting part of Friday night because there are no starters that'll be playing, at least for the Raiders. So it's going to be a kind of eh. You know, there's a lot of tickets that are available. People are giving tickets away right now just in anticipation of that. But the alumni, it's exciting to see the Raider alumni in the building. So here's AP thanking the alumni who were also out of practice on, uh, on, on Wednesday night. Last thing, appreciate all the alumni and everybody coming out. There'll be about 250 of those gentlemen out there, and there's nothing like our alumni being around. Our team loves it, and we'll put on one more show for them at practice. All right, thank you guys. So I thought that was a cool tip of the cap. AP gets it. He does, right? I mean, we've talked about it. We talked about restoring the Raider way. Just talked about him understanding the culture of what it is to be, you know, a member of the silver and black and what it means to put on those colors and, you know, represent that shield and just what it means to be a Raider. Again, I've said it a thousand times. He's still got to go out there and win games. You can understand what it means to be a Raider, but you can't have a terrible season. You can't have multiple terrible seasons and think that, oh, you're going to be fine. Got to go out there and win games. And that includes this season, regardless of what you think about the quarterback position. They've got to be tasked with going out there and winning games. Uh, final little um, final nugget I have for you for segment number one of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. We'll get into my three biggest questions I have about this team coming up in segment number two. Uh, I've been keeping track of the Henderson Little League team, the Paseo Verde team. They lost to Texas. I talked about it uh, on Wednesday's show that they had a tough one against Texas. Uh, Bernie, Texas, as a matter of fact, they lost 5-2 to two in a tough-fought battle. But they're not out of it. They play in the elimination game today. They're going to play against South Florida coming up at 4 o'clock. But uh, AP was asked about the Little Leaguers, uh, you know, with that tough loss to Texas. No, it's just tough. We ordered a bunch of hats. But, you know, we're going to keep rooting them on. And we'll really be excited when Adam gets back here. We'll have him do some pregame speeches because I guess he's doing a good job of that with the Little League guys. But, um, man, hats off to those guys because um, when Adam first told me about it when we went to California, I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I, like, I thought it was kind of cool. Then I realized how cool it was that they was going to the World Series. So, man, we – on all our televisions, we've been watching and dialed in. We were dialed in today, and, you know, I think they, man, they put a great effort in. They represented, you know, Nevada well, and we're proud of them. I think that's awesome that they're rooting on the team. You know, they're rooting on, obviously, the coach. They're rooting on the manager. You know, they can't wait to get Adam back there in the mix, and, you know, he's going to give a couple of pregame speeches. Clearly, he's good at what they do. It's cool to have that storyline. I love the Little League World Series anyway, but it's cool to have that extra storyline to help follow along. And I'll say this, as I've been watching the Little League World Series, South Florida's really good. They are really good. They got some swag about themselves, as you can imagine, being from South Florida. Uh, but they can hit. They can play. Uh, they are a fun bunch. So this is going to be a good game, elimination game. Uh, if they lose, they go home. Simple as that. So Nevada will play at 4 o'clock on ESPN. Check it out versus South Florida. Uh, looking forward to that. But that's what I got for you for segment number one on today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Coming up segment number two, the three biggest questions I have about this team. They might get answered on Friday. They might not get answered to the regular season. That comes up next here on the Lockdown Raiders podcast. Before we get to that, though, I do want to tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is Game Time. And Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. 
Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Matter of fact, Game Time's 50% off Labor Day offer. They have Diamondback and Dodger tickets. They Yeah, you want to go to the Diamondback Dodger game? You can. It's on Labor Day. It's exclusively on Game Time. Limited availability and supply. Get your tickets while they last. Again, it's a Labor Day special. There's so many ways to save money on tickets no matter when you buy. It's the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase and the Game Time guarantee. You want to have that, right? You'll always get the best price. That's simple. You find tickets in the same section of row less. Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference so uh what you need to do right now is well you got to get hooked up. you got to take the guesswork out of buying concert tickets or any of the other tickets with game time download the game time app create the account use the promo code locked on nfl it's all one word for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms do apply again create the account use the promo code locked on nfl that's l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n-n-f-l all one word for 20 dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed all right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to deep dive into the three biggest questions I have about this team. Maybe they could be answered as early as Friday, you know, when they play the 49ers. Maybe they won't take till the regular season, uh, you know, before they could be answered. And who knows, maybe they won't get answered at all. I think they will, but you never really know. And it's funny, I had this conversation on my radio show on Wednesday, but I was just asking for one big question, right? One, one, what was your one biggest question? And I'll give you mine in just a second. But then there were so many other ones that popped in my head and there were some really great responses. So I kind of wanted to collaborate it all and bring it to the table. So my big question, the one I talked about on the radio quite a bit on Wednesday on Raider Nation Radio 920 on Necessary Roughness was Tyree Wilson, the former number seven overall pick. The guy out there wearing number nine, the guy that I believe could be a dominating force along that defensive line, the guy that Dave Ziegler and Josh McDaniels and company drafted to be the Robin to Max Crosby's Batman. And we know that he was injured last year. We know this. So kind of gets that red shirt freshman type of feel. Like, okay, you, you give him a little bit of burn. He understands what it's like to be in the NFL. Now it's time for him to come back, come back stronger, right? Well, now I just want to see when is he going to show up. When are you going to start to see him make plays? When is he going to start to be that force? Whether that's at the edge rusher position, whether that's inside, I, I, I don't really care. I just want to see what they're going to get with Tyree Wilson. And, and the funny thing is, you know, the saving grace in this whole Tyree Wilson situation, I've talked about it here on the podcast, is that Malcolm Coons has emerged. Like, none of us knew that Malcolm Coons was going to end up being the guy that he was at the end of the 2023 season with those eight sacks post November 1st and three fourths fumbles. Nobody knew that he was going to step up and be that guy. Now I think we all feel pretty comfortable that he's actually the Robin to Max Crosby's Batman. So that works out really well. But at the same time, Tyree Wilson is a former number seven overall pick. He's expected to be that guy. And, you know, right now, and I said it when we were in Costa Mesa at training camp, I haven't seen anything from him. What I've seen from him is him being a big dude Rocking the number nine. like He looks like he's in really good shape. Looks like he's, you know, rocked up as far as muscles and everything. He looks healthy, but he's just not out there making plays. And you know the one thing I'll say about Tyree, and I didn't say this on the radio, but I'll, I'll say it. You know, I remember when he was at that sack summit at UNLV with Max Crosby and, and other, you know, edge rushers along the National Football League, but Max Crosby's really taking it over. You know, Von Miller's there, Cam Jordan's there, but Tyree was there. I remember my guy Vegas just sent me a picture. Me and the wife had just got back from Hawaii, like literally got back that day. It was a Sunday, and we just got back from Hawaii, and Vegas just sent me uh, the tweet and said, oh, man, Tyree looks like a monster. And I remember sending him back a text saying, that don't even look like Tyree. He looks too big. I don't know if that's really him or not. And then come to find out after I saw some video later, I was like, oh, no, you know what? That is Tyree. And I remember telling him specifically, There's, I think he's going to slim down a little bit. I think he might be too big. Right, he might be, you know, into that David Boston type size. Remember David Boston when he played with the Chargers, the wide receiver, and he was big, and then he got big, <laughs> and then he just got not good. Right, he just wasn't a, a very good wide receiver when he got really big. I don't know if Tyree is too big at this stage. Maybe he doesn't need to be as rocked up as he is. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I'm. I don't want to say concerned because again, I, I feel like the Raiders have a little bit of wiggle room since Malcolm Kuntz has emerged and. Of course, Christian Wilkins there and John Jenkins and Adam Butler. I feel good about the Raiders defensive line, period, with or without Tyree. But it would be nice to have Tyree, right? So that was my big question. When is he going to arrive at the party? What is he going to do at the party? And where is he going to do it from? Interior, outside, what's he going to do? It feels like the Raiders are just trying to find a spot for him. Like Adam Butler said at Costa Mesa, Tyree's got to find a, something that he does good and just do it right? 
AP said he's taking baby steps, right? I was reaching out to someone. I was texting back and forth to someone that, you know, obviously knows what's going on inside the, you know, the Raiders building and is talking to, you know, the coaching staff and everybody. And, you know, they said that they felt like there it could be, you know, something in his head where he's thinking too much about it. And you know what I say about thinking all the time? When you're thinking about what you're doing, you're operating slow. And that's what it feels like with Tyree. He's just thinking too much at the point of attack Got the size. He's got the speed. He's just using his brain too much. He's thinking too much, and it's slowing him down. That very well could be the situation. Tyree's got to figure out how to stop thinking and how to just go play. So that's one big question I have. That's my biggest question. Number two, I'm sticking with the defense. Can the defense live up to the hype? You know, top five unit that we expect them to be. I've, I've talked about them being a top five, top three unit. I talked about them in Costa Mesa being that way. I saw them flying around the field. Saw him making life miserable on the offense. I'm like, man, this defense is going to be lights out. You know, especially with the addition of Christian Wilkins, that defensive line that I just talked about with or without Tyree Wilson. I think they're going to be getting after the quarterback a lot. But now we see them struggling to stop the run. So now they've got to figure out how to do that, how to fix that, that, run, that run defense, right? And, of course, they've got some time before the first game of the season, right? I mean, they, they just are, haven't only started tackling in two different games, that's it. I mean, there was real tackling and training camp. So, I mean, there's there's plenty of room to to improve that. And and those guys along the defensive line are are are, are pros, pros. You know, but we had a gangster Raider calling to the radio station on Wednesday, and he was talking about uh, the the run defense, and he said, "Man, it's like rebounds, like that. You just gotta want to, you know, to stop the run, you gotta have that want to." Just like grabbing rebounds at basketball. It ain't something sexy. It ain't something that, you know, people are like, oh, man, that's going to be a Hall of Famer, even though Dennis Rodman did it at such a high level. But he also had want to. He just wanted to go get those boards. You were going to have to want to stop the run. So uh, that's what Patrick Graham, Rob Leonard, Mike Caldwell, AP, all the coaches, that's their job. That's what they're tasked with right now, getting that defense so they can stop the run. And if they can, can they live up to the hype, right? Everyone's expecting this defense to be real nasty and lead this team. I expect that. I've said it so many times. Am I going to be proven wrong? It's very possible. But obviously they haven't played a game yet, so I'm not you know, bailing on that. I'm just saying there's, there's a possibility that maybe they don't live up to the hype. Maybe they're not top five. Maybe they're only top ten. What does that mean for their win-loss record in 2024? And then my final question for you, and the f- final question I have for this team, how long can Gardner Minshew hold on to the starting job? We hear AP talk about the first quarter, getting off to a hot start. You know, if if Gardner Minshew is doing some really good things and helping this team win games, he's going to play throughout the course of the year. But if Aiden O'Connell pops in week five, week six, week seven, things probably aren't going too well for the silver and black. So how long will Gardner Minshew hold on to that starting quarterback spot? Could it be the entirety of the year? Could it be, you know, up to the bye week? Could it be the first quarter of the season like AP has been talking about, right? It's all up to him to figure it out. He's getting an opportunity for the first time in his NFL career to start off the season as a, as a starter. What is he going to do with it? Is he going to embrace it or is he going to throw a screen pass that gets picked off by, you know, the edge rusher like he did in practice with Max Crosby. Now Max Crosby is a phenomenal player, but you can't have those turnovers, right? We know that something AP was talking about. Got to have ball security. Is he going to pick up this Luke Getze offense? How does Luke Getze set up this offense to design it around him? Does he master it? Does he not get happy feet? Does he stay in the pocket and deliver the ball when the, when the play is there to be made? Can he escape from trouble? Of course, we know he can, but does he leave too early? Right? There's a bunch of questions. So, you know, Tyree Wilson will figure out some things. I, you know, Vic Tafer told me the other day, we'll know how this staff feels about Tyree Wilson based off how much he plays on, on Friday, if he plays on Friday versus the 49ers, right? I think he's going to play. He's not a starter. But if he plays like the first half, maybe even into the third quarter, kind of let you know what the staff thinks about him, right? Playing in the final preseason game when none of the starters are playing. Aiden O'Connell's not playing, right? A- a- AP's already said Aiden O'Connell's not playing. It's going to be the Carter Bradley show. It's going to be the Nate-, Nate Peterman show, right? It's a lot of guys that aren't going to be playing. DJ Turner probably won't even be playing, who's the number four wide receiver. He probably won't even be playing. So we'll see what the staff thinks of Tyree based off his playing time coming up on Friday. Defense, can it live up to the hype and be a top five unit? That's something that we won't know until the season gets rolling and they're, you know, a handful of games in. Then we'll get a good idea of what that defense could be. And, of course, how long can Gardner Minshew hold on to the starting job? Something else we won't know until the season gets going. What does he look like while he's out there? Those are the three big questions I have for this team moving forward. You know, and what are your thoughts? Three big questions that you have. Let me know about it. 707-654-4693. It's a Lockdown Raider Podcast voicemail line. Your calls and texts are coming up next as we close out the show. 
Before we get to that, though, I do want to tell you about FanDuel, and you've heard me talk about FanDuel quite a bit. It's America's number one sports book. Well, they have something a little different for you. Right now, through September 22nd, it's about a month from right now, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of, pay- of payment, and then you can cancel at any time. But for three weeks, you're going to get you know, you're gonna get NFL Sunday tickets, which is a game-changer. If you're not going to the games, if you don't live in the local market of your team and you want to watch the silver and black every week, having that NFL Sunday ticket is a game changer. I can't tell you how many Sundays it made me happy to go ahead and turn on that TV and blink. There it is right there. NFL Sunday ticket. There goes the silver and black. Just fa- just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Download America's number one sports book to get started today. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls and texts throughout that Locked On Raider podcast. Voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Let's start things off with Raider Mike in East L.A. He's calling to talk about the first four games of the season and how important it is for the Raiders to get off to a hot start and adds an element to the convo that he feels is very important. Here he is, Raider Mike in East L.A. What up, Q? This is Raider Mike from East L.A. Uh, just listening to the podcast right now about the first quarter of the season and how imperative it is for us to have a hot start to the season. I think I just want to add another I think important factor to this. It's not only the, the offense being able to click and being able to um, make big plays, but it's also going to depend on defense and the ability to stop the run. When I mean, you look at the AFC opponents, the Chargers, the Ravens, and the Browns, you know, all three of them are going to want to do nothing but to run, can to run the ball for most of the game. The Ravens have a potent run offense with Derrick Henry, who may not be his old self, but still has some gas left in that tank and could be a big threat. And Lamar Jackson, who's probably one of the best uh, running QBs we've seen in a very long time. And even the Browns uh, is supposed to get Nick Chubb back. And if he's back to his old self, he's going to be a problem to stop as well. So I think as important as it is for the uh, offense to be able to get going, to score a lot of points, and to be able to really uh, be able to do that, I think it's also going to be definitely important for the defense to uh, step up and stop the run because, you know, it's not going to matter how many points we score if, the, the other offense can't be on the field because the other team is running down the defense is so, and there's nothing we can do to stop them, you know? So, yeah, that's all I want to thank you. I uh, appreciate all you've done. appreciate everything you do on um, the podcast. Keep doing your thing. Go read it. Mike, thanks so much. And, yes, stopping the run. Talked about it in segment number two. It's going to be a big deal, right? It's going to be necessary to give the Raiders a chance to get off to that hot start. They can't stop the run. They most likely aren't going to ain't going to be winning a lot of games, right? They're going to be losing those games, right? They're not going to get off to that hot start. They can't stop the run against the Chargers. It's going to be a long day at the office. Can't stop the run against the Ravens. It's going to be a long day at the office. And guess what? The Carolina Panthers are going to go into Legion Stadium and say, "Hey, guess what? Those guys can't stop the run. You know what we're going to do? We're going to run." And then the Browns, we know how they want to butter their bread. They're going to run the rock as well. I mean, there's look, it's just it's, it's a no-brainer. If a team can't stop the run, what should you do? You should, you should run. You should run the rock and make them stop you. So I do think the Raiders have time to clean it up, obviously, before the first week of the season. But, man, oh, man, if they if they want to get off to that hot start that AP's talking about, it ain't going to matter if, if Gardner Minshew is putting up points if they can't stop the run because they're not going to win shootouts. This is not an offense that you're going to see in a bunch of shootouts. You're just not, not in my opinion. So thanks so much for that call. I do appreciate you. Up next, got a text from Angry Raider. It says, hey, Q. Angry Raider, longtime listener, first time caller, just want to chime in and ask about two things. First, I was with most everyone else that O'Connell seemed to be the leader for the starting job that ended up going to Minshew. Minshew has always been a backup everywhere he's been and has found decent enough success coming in midseason and leading his team to either the playoffs or near the playoffs. Do you think he has more upside now that he knows he's QB1 at the start of the season and, has, and he has a few weeks to get reps with the ones versus when he jumped in and had to figure it out? Second, I think it's great what the Raiders are doing with open practices, free to the fans. I agree with you that the team needs to win to help get a better home field advantage. But with them, with 
them still being the new kids in school when it comes to Vegas, I think doing events like this will promote locals to hopefully attend more games and have a similar atmosphere to what they had in Oakland. Appreciate everything you do, Q. I may be from the 520, but the family and I recently moved to Rhode Island, and you're still the first listen every day. I hope that 10-year average for radio hosts doesn't happen with you and the podcast. You really are the voice of Raider Nation. Take it easy and be safe. Go Raiders. That's from our guy, Angry Raider. Thanks so much. I do appreciate that. Thanks for the compliment as well. And, yeah, that's the one thing, man, about this podcast network, the Locked On Podcast Network. I feel like I can do this show for another 15 years, and I feel like that they would let me. Right. I mean, just because uh, the show has been fantastic. Uh, the network is awesome. It really is. I mean, David Locke, I got to give him a lot of credit. I also want to shout out Ross Jackson, who's he's basically the manager of the Locked On NFL uh, part of the network. He does a great job as well. Communications, fantastic. Uh, but they allow me to be me. And that's that's something that everyone doesn't do. So uh, basically, I feel like I, I could be here on the Locked On podcast network as long as as long as uh, I want to be right. And so that's that feels good. Um, you know, radio. Is radio. Like I said, it's usually about a 10-year window, and then you're looking for something else. And if you get that 10 years, then you're feeling good about yourself. I love what you said about the new kids in school in Vegas uh, because they do need to embrace the community, and I think that they realize that. Sandra Douglas Morgan, the president, being from Las Vegas, she knows what it's like to, you know, to be here in the community and what it means. And so, yeah, I do think these events will really help out, just like they had a practice on on Wednesday at the facility and they had a bunch of first responders like that goes a big way. That goes a long way. It really does. So I think that that's, I think that that's a great point that you bring up and I do expect them to do more of that. And the other thing that they do a lot of is they do a lot of community stuff with the high schools and high school sports. Matter of fact, on my radio show uh, every week in the high school football season, I do the Tom Flores high school football coach of the week award. And they basically are donating like a thousand dollars for every uh, program every year, every week they give out the award Whoever gets it, that program is going to get $1,000. Uh, they're going to get treated to, you know, a team meal. I think at Buffalo Wild Wings. But, you know, they got players that go out there and represent and show them love. I just think that that's a big deal to really embrace the community, not just be a team that plays in the area and plays in the neighborhood and plays in the community, but embraces the community and is part of the community. That's what they're really trying to do. Uh, as far as Minshew goes, uh, I think that what AP is going to uh, hope for and banking on, that the spark that he provides off the bench – is a spark that he's going to provide to start the season because they need to get off to a, a fast start. So I think that that's what he's banking on, that, hey, this guy can do what he does coming off the bench, but he's going to be able to do it at the beginning of the season and, and get the ball rolling really well. And then at some point, if something goes wrong, maybe they could turn the sticks over to Aiden O'Connell. But, you know, I think that that's what he's looking for. He's just looking for that jump start. It's almost like, you know, you go out to your car and your battery's dead, <laughs> your battery, your battery's dead, and then you go, boom, and you just jump start it, and it gets you where you need to go. That's, that's kind of how I look at Gardner Minshew. I feel like that that's how AP is looking at him as well. But thanks so much for the text. And like I said, thanks so much for the kind words. I do appreciate you. Up next, got a call from Eli in the 408. He's calling to talk about Tyree Wilson and what he has or hasn't seen from him lately. Here he is, Eli in the 408. Yo, yo, Q. It's uh, Eli from the 408, man. Uh, got a little comment, man. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's the second, you know, second game, you know, already passed, you know. QB's name and all that is cool. But one thing I have noticed, man, that's kind of bothering me, low-key, is, is Kyrie Wilson, you know what I mean? A lot of, a lot of like, hoopla and, and upside as far as who, he's, who he should be and who he should be becoming, you know what I mean? Especially shining out, you know, while he's got Wilkins and, 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 uh, and Max Crosby there, you know what I mean? Like, he should be, like, the third, you know, the third anchor there, you know what I mean? Like to, to move to move the line, to be disruptive, you know, to 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 be right there and, and stop the runs I deal, you know what I mean? Um I it, I just feel like when I watch like when I watch his tape or when I see him play, man, it's just like you know, the line moves. Uh, the line moves and then and you know, he moves with the line. It's not like he disrupts anything. I mean, maybe it's just me noticing it or or maybe I'm wrong, you know what I mean? I, it, it's not so I'm calling in to, to for you to school me, you know what I mean? Uh, or maybe just be like, hey, you know what? You know, Eli, actually, you're wrong. This guy's actually been doing this and this and that. Uh, but, yeah, man, I would like to hear your opinion on that. And, I, I mean, I I would like to see him spark a little bit, to be honest, pull like a, a you know, an, a classic Oakland athletics move and just trade him, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, we got we got, we got got Coons, we got all these guys. Um, I feel like, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but – I just want to see him do a little, a little better, you know what I mean? And then also, second part to this question is, uh, um, do you think by the trade deadline, 
um, when we're on the bye week, would it be a smart move to, to go for a free agent quarterback? If, if, uh, if, oh, uh, what, what situation do you think we might have to go to for, for a free agent quarterback? You know what I mean? Let's just say per injury, let's just say, like, hopefully not. But, 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 just let, I mean, yeah, just, uh, let me know what situation you think or who you would think, uh, would be a good fit to be, uh, a free agent pickup, if need be, you know what I mean, uh, at, at the quarterback position. Uh, but, yeah, man, thank you, Q. Appreciate your time, bro. And, uh, all right, peace. Raiders. Eli, thanks for the call, my man. Appreciate you. And as you can tell by segment number two, my number one big question for the Raiders, obviously I'm not going to tell you that you're wrong because I got the same question that you have, right? He hasn't flashed at all. It's disappointing. Uh, I think he should be eating with Max and Wilkins and the rest of the line. He's just not. Right, and all I can remember is going back to last Saturday against the Cowboys. I mean, he had contain outside contain. Trey Lance went on his own read run, you know, kind of did a little stop and go, and left left Tyree in the in in the dust. He he bit, and he's supposed to keep contain, and he didn't. And all of a sudden, Trey Lance is around him. Now, Trey Lance is a very athletic dude. I get it, but when you have outside contain, guess what you're supposed to have outside contain, and he didn't. So, I mean, that's things things like that is what he's going to see on film, and has got to be able to find a way to clean that up. The coaching staff's got to help him clean it up, and he's got to help himself clean it up. But, uh, Eli, thanks for the call. I appreciate you. Up next, got a text from Raider Doug in Phoenix. It says, hey, Q, it's Raider Doug from Phoenix. I'm curious your thoughts on leaving Jack Jones on the island against their ones. I like his play on the ball, but he can also get caught peeking in the backfield. Do you think that that works in our favor more times than not? Thanks for all that you do. Raiders. That's Raider Doug in Phoenix. And, look, I think Jack Jones is who Jack Jones is. You know, you're going you're gonna to love some of his play. You're going to hate some of his play. There's going to be times where he's going to get beat like he got beat on Saturday versus the Cowboys, peeking in the backfield, like you said, you know, and fall for the double move. It was an easy play. He knows it. But he's that guy that he's going to go and make plays on the ball all the time. He's going to look for the ball all the time. And there's going to be times that we're all going to, you know, hit ourselves in the head and be like, oh, man, how did he How did he get burnt like that? It's just going to happen. That's who he is. But if he comes away with five, six, seven interceptions this season, right, and, and has some really nice pass breakups, Ain't nobody going to worry about giving up, you know, a play here or, the, or play there. And then at some point, teams are going to start stop throwing his way if he makes enough plays. And I do think Jack Jones has an opportunity to make some plays. Hell, you saw what he did in a limited amount of time last season with the Raiders. Two picks, two pick sixes. It's pretty good. I like that ratio. So we'll see. But, yeah, I mean, he's he's got to be out there. He's got to be out there on the island with the, with the ones. JB, I think, is really going to be good across from him. And Nate Hobbs, as long as he's healthy, will be in the slot. He's dealing with a little bit of a foot injury. Right now, didn't have practice on Wednesday, but I'm sure he'll be ready to go by uh, the time the season gets around here on September 8th. Thanks so much for that text. Up next, and we'll close out with this one, a call from Adam in Huntington Beach. He's calling to talk about the situation with Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew and why this situation could end up working out well for O'Connell and the Raiders. Here he is, Adam in Huntington Beach. Q, it's Raider Adam in Huntington Beach. Um, I'm kind of reaching out because I want to give my two cents on this Aiden O'Connell Garden Minshew thing. So I was thinking before they even said the starters, right? I think it's in our best interest, you let me know, to sit Aiden O'Connell in the beginning, right? Let him sit. Let him learn. He was baptized by fire last year. I mean, this year would have been the same thing. He'd be running running around with the O-line, and I think he has a possibility to be that long-term quarterback if he sits. And no way am I comparing the quarterbacks right now. I'm not who I'm going to bring up. I'm not comparing them. I'm comparing the situation. I mean, you got Brett Favre sitting behind Aaron Rodgers for a few, or Aaron Rodgers sitting behind Brett Favre for a few years, developed into a really good quarterback. I'm not comparing Aiden O'Connell to Aaron Rodgers or Minshew to Brett Favre. Same with Jordan Love, sat behind Aaron Rodgers for a while, didn't develop that first season, but his next season is polished off, and he's supposed to have a good one this year. They're learning on the sideline. They're learning from other people's mistakes or what to do, what not to do, and they're not killing their confidence or their body. They're sitting there, right? Not A lot of the rookie, a lot of the people that come out of the draft quarterbacks, as a rookie, they don't, they don't, they don't start. And when they do, a lot of times it doesn't turn out well. So, I mean, Tom Brady sat behind somebody, Steve Young, um, Philip Rivers. The list goes on and on. No one starts their first year, first two years. I mean, people do, but they don't do it and then just 
have a great career. A lot of times you got to sit, you got to learn, you got to adjust because it's different, right? So I'm kind of catching up on the podcast. I I'm a day behind, so if this is irrelevant because you guys ever talked about it, sorry. But that's kind of my two cents on it. I'm glad Garner Minshew's a starter. I mean, regardless, I'm a Raider fan through and through, right? But regardless, I really don't think I would love to see it. But I don't think we're going to the Super Bowl this year. So why are we going to kill our possible franchise quarterback? I'm not saying he is possible, just to get. Just, just to get in the race. I want to get in the race. I think Gardner Minshew can get us there. But, I mean, Ed O'Connell can learn on the side, uh, get those mental reps, go and practice. And if his time comes, the season it comes. But if not, he's saving his body, learning on the side, not killing his confidence, man. So let me know what you think about that. Um, just go Raider Nation. I'm looking forward to the season. Adam, thanks so much for the call. Appreciate you. And there's something to that for sure. Right, The biggest reason why Minshew is the guy is what AP believes the Raiders can get off to a fast start. We talked about be that spark, be that jumper cable, right? Just boom, boom, get that car, that, that, that quick jump. I mean, AP has said O'Connell will start in this league. It's just going to have to take more time. He's young. He's on a rookie deal. He can sit for a while, and he can still be good to go. The good thing about Aiden O'Connell is he's got a great attitude. He really does. I mean, he said the other day following practice, I'm going to support Minshew. I'm going to be ready when my number's called, if my number's called. I mean, he's, he's got it between the ears. And that's all you could really want. A guy who's out there supporting, you know, also going to try to push that quarterback to even be better. And, hey, this is what I'm seeing and, and work together as a team. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about that. And if things don't work out with Minshew, I'm sure AP is going to say, hey, it's not working. Let's go to the kid. Let's go to O'Connell and see what he can do. And that's just how it's been for Aiden's whole career. Right. And so it's nothing that he's not used to. But thanks so much for that call. I do appreciate it. And, that's all I got time for on today's show. I got a text from Cyreezy. Got a call from Cheeto in the 805. A text from uh, La Mirada Raider guy. Uh, we got all that. All that good stuff coming up tomorrow's show. We'll talk about what I'm looking for uh, in preseason game number three. Friday's game against, uh, against the 49ers at Allegiant Stadium. Of course, we'll have more news and notes as well. And then the preseason will be wrapped up. Right By the time uh, we wake up on Saturday morning, the preseason will be wrapped up. And we'll start talking about well, the Raiders getting ready for the Chargers. So uh, excited about that. Like I said, we'll be back tomorrow talking about what I'm looking for in the in Friday's game, preseason game number three versus 49ers, and a whole lot more. So until then, Raider Nation, take care of yourself, take care of your family, love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.